It's exciting to celebrate what God is doing in people's lives, and we are doing this series called Celebrating the Goodness of God. Here's one more story. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. The story we're celebrating this weekend is God's goodness in the life of Craig Hall. And he and his wife Jennifer have uh, been on staff here at uh, Family Church for a while now, but the story wasn't always that way. And we want to take you back to see how God has been at work. So Greg, why don't you start us off with how did God bring you to Sutherland and specifically how was that God working in your life? Yeah, it's kind of weird that I'm even talking about this story because really when I came to Sutherland, there's, as I look back, it's clear that God was moving. Um, at the time, I just thought we were really lucky about some things. In fact, so I, I had left the Marine Corps. I was done serving for the Marine Corps. I had finished my teaching degree, and I was a third grade teacher hired in Roseburg. Yeah. And so we were house shopping. We kept coming down, and there was a house in a neighborhood in Sutherland that was over our price range. We just could not afford it. We thought, man, that'd be a great house. And uh, we kept looking at Myrtle Creek and Roseburg, and we almost settled on a home and all of a sudden, this house became available here in Sutherland. So we're like, we like want it. A whole bunch of money. Yeah, like ten thousand dollars. It dropped. It was still right at the edge of what we could afford, but we said we're really interested. So we drove up, stood on the steps of the house, and we made an offer. We didn't even go inside. We just said we know this is it. Now we didn't know that across the street was this guy named Paul, and he was the pastor at Family Church. And the neighbors next door to us, their family was the founding family, is part of the, the yeah. absolute founders of Family Church. And uh, so God was saying, basically, I, I want to get your attention. <laughs> and so here I was, right across the street from Pastor Paul. And, and, and tell, how did our relationship start? Yeah, it's so funny because. I'd like to play. I'm a joker. We, we goof around and there was snow and it was cool. There was great snow and Paul and Jan had some girls across the street and our neighbors were gone. And so we went into their yard and used their snow. <laughs> we didn't want to destroy a snow in our yard. And there were these girls across the street. So Jennifer and I just started having a snowball fight with the Glazner girls. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we ended that night with hot chocolate and hanging out and just introducing each other. Yeah. So that was kind of the introduction. Uh, to what God was already preparing. It's pretty and cool. And there was lots of relationship uh, back and forth across the street with coffee and cookies and kids coming over. Yeah. And, and I had no idea that Paul was a pastor. So when I found out, the first thing I thought was, oh no, what jokes have I told him? <laughs> and how's my language? <laughs> And, uh, and then he comes over and there's a time where I literally almost shot his eye out with a, a nail gun. And then I thought, great, I'm going to be the guy in town that shot the pastor's eye out. What kind of person am I? And, you know, we just started hanging out and fishing. And, and really, I started to come to faith at Family Church. Yeah, it was actually the other neighbor that invited you to church this first time. Yeah. And yeah. so you started coming. Yeah, in fact, it was kind of an interesting journey. I did a lot of, uh, for those of you who are like podcasters, I actually listened to cassette tapes. That was what I listened to, um, teachings, Bible teachings. And so I'd come and ask Paul questions, and we'd fish, and we'd talk in the boat. And I remember this time, in fact, that Paul goes, boy, what would it be like if you told your testimony someday? And I kind of knew what a testimony was, and I also knew that he was out of his mind. <laughs> like, there's no way, God... If, Paul or God, either one, there's no way. I'm not doing this. And I remember vividly this moment in Winchester Bay when you asked that question. I was mm -hmm. like, ah. Oh. And you know what? We kept coming to church. And I started serving, actually, with the children's ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jennifer was pregnant. So this was 1998. So it's been a while, right? And we'd only been coming to church for about six months. But, but there was a surrender moment where I really came to true faith, I believe, where I just said yes to Jesus. Uh, we thought we were going to lose our oldest child. And uh, that was an impacting moment. And I just said, no, whatever you have for us, God, I trust you. And 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 that oldest boy is alive today. I praise God for that. Mm -hmm. But it was a moment of surrender. And you'd kind of grown up in a nominal Catholic home, so you had some background and stuff, but this yeah. was your moment of trusting Christ. Yeah, there's no doubt. It was, mm -hmm. it was clear in my mind that this is the day, that I'm truly taking my head knowledge and my heart is in and mm -hmm. I've surrendered. So yeah, it was a cool moment. And, and so I kept serving. I kept serving. Um, did children's ministry for a while. And as a teacher, I was really struggling though. Like this is not the best fit for me. I love kids, but I'm so stuck in curriculum that I had a tough time with relationship. 
And so I actually stepped out of children's ministry and I really struggled through that. So I did a lot of behind the scenes, uh, just helping out around mm -hmm. the church. And, and Jennifer, my wife, she was on staff at the time as a secretary and helping out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. And yeah. I think it was a little bit after that when you started playing the guitar and you were just yeah. beginning to pick up that skill. And I remember you were doing a talent show or something at the school and you and another teacher were actually going to oh, do a song for the first time. And you were just uh, nervous forgot. about that. I forgot all about that. Yeah, it was funny. I always wanted to play guitar. Like I'm a great air guitarist, <laughs> really good, talented in high school. And then I really started to play guitar. And there was a funny thing in my mind like, well, I guess if we're going to play guitar, God, maybe you can use it someday. And wouldn't you know... The thing I said I wouldn't do, which is go to Mexico, I went to Mexico. So, so tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah. You're sitting up there in, this, uh, in the balcony watching yeah. when we do Mexico team reports. How, what yeah. was your response? My response is, you're out of your mind again, this guy. This guy who asked me to share my testimony, he goes and he serves in Mexico. On spring break. On spring break. Yeah. Come on. And I was like, these guys are crazy. Why are they doing this? They're, they're, I just don't get it. And even there was even getting close to the times of Cambodia trips. There's all these global things. And I just thought, I don't understand what that is. But it became very clear. God's basically moved me in a point where, where at, at some point I finally went to Mexico. And the guitar playing, I led worship there for the team at our BBS. I thought, what in the world for BBS? You're going to have me sing Spanish songs <laughs> and play guitar. And I helped do some kind of just general worship leading with the team. And so I went from my two boys in a bathtub as my audience <laughs> to this first right out of the just, here you go. And, and here I was in Mexico serving. And it was a pivotal moment in my life. God really transformed, again, my heart from just the heart of an attender and a heart, maybe even a heart of, yeah, yeah, I'll give a little, I'll do, to really a, a really big move of surrender, even more of the purpose of my life. Yeah, I remember that was a big transition in your thinking about who you were and what was important. And yeah, and I know you were struggling a bit at the, in the in your role as a school teacher. Yeah, and uh, and God used that all together in the next step where you actually began to feel called to serve on staff. How did that happen? So there's some of the story that people don't know is um, there was a time. Gosh, I don't even know. 15, 16 years ago. There was a transition of, of a children's pastor position, and I actually applied for that. And I, so I turned in the application, and I immediately thought, what am I doing? No way, and I backed out. Because I'm not a pastor person. Yeah, no way. Like, I can teach school, but whatever. Um, and then I think it was about two years later, there was actually a youth position that came available, and I applied for that, and I even interviewed, and I just ran. So no way. No way is this for me. And I think all of these looking back are clear moves where God was saying, I am moving you, but you're not ready. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. But this is what it takes to get you ready. And so when it came to the, the Mexico trip, uh, Pastor Ed and I went on a drive together for 28 hours. <laughs> we left late because I couldn't leave because of teaching. Um, and we came home early because of some illness. We had to bring some people back. But we, 28 hours down, roughly 28 hours back, we talked about what God was doing in my life. Mm -hmm. And really, it was that year, 2010, that I quit teaching. God called me into ministry. I was voted in and accepted. Who knows why? Like, I still get it. I don't get it. But I became the youth pastor and uh, really began sort of that full-time ministry that God had called me to. And then I did missions as well. And really, missions is, of all the things, I looked at the... I can't believe you'd go do that. And God says, oh, there's more. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you places that a lot of people probably are going to say the same thing about you. I can't believe you'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think it's exciting when you watch how God has developed Craig. And it's been such a rewarding experience to watch God at work in your life and having been a close friend for lots of years and, yeah. and hearing your frustration with things and your heart for things and and how God has developed you. I, I say to people that Craig is kind of our utility Swiss army knife. You know, he's, he's able to do good administration. He's good with the leading worship. He's uh, got a passion and a heart for global missions. He's uh, great at, you know, he's had some world travel experience and does that very well. And, mm -hmm. and he's a great planner. And I just think of all these well-rounded skills 
that God knew what he was doing in creating you. He's creating a, a position for you and a purpose for you. Yeah. So yeah. it's exciting for me personally that at the time I'm coming up to my retirement, um, I'm looking at some of these young leaders, um, working with them and watching, watching them begin to do better the things that I've been trying to do and seeing some blind spots and watching them step in and make some challenges and some changes. And I couldn't be more delighted with, with the team that God has put together to lead Family Church uh, in the time that I'm going to be kind of laying that burden down. And so why don't you tell a little bit, Craig, about where you are now and what you see going forward? Yeah, I was. Uh, the move of God is is pretty remarkable. Um, I still, I, I mean, I humbly just say, I can do a lot of things, which is great. What a gift of God that He's let me do. I'm not really great, great at a lot of things. I've never been one of those master artists. I love art. I've never been a master guitarist. I love it, but I just can't put the energy into going that next level. But I love having a wide range of things, right. and I think that. Um, as, as we've kind of been looking to ultimately your retirement was coming, there's a lot of questions we've been asking. Yeah. What's next? We've been working on this for five years. Yeah, but there's one, there's something that happened historically. There was a moment, and I don't remember when it was in this timeline, where you and I were having a conversation, and I had a very clear dream that I was speaking. Hmm. And I remember sharing that with you, and I just thought, this is kind of one of those weird moments where I was like, that is... I'm not on staff. I'm not, I am not called to teach and preach, whatever. I don't know what that was about. But I remember distinctly when, after being on staff for a few years, started to have some opportunities to not just speak with the youth, but to begin to kind of talk in a larger scale with, with the congregation. And so really, as I've been kind of transitioning, my heart for missions has is not dissipated. I know that this is a clear call. So my, my role in helping family church reach the nations is a vital part of moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. How to balance that, that's what we're still up to work on, how to, to figure that piece out. But, uh, you know, I expect I'm, I, I enjoy teaching, so I'll be doing some teaching. But ultimately, I'm going to step in and take the, uh, the, the position at Sutherland as the campus pastor there, be a part of teaching team. Probably fill in for some worship every once in a while when they'll let me. Um, and then uh, do some speaking, take teams to Mexico, go serve globally, uh, and really just figure out how we can continue to reach our community and go beyond that. So that's where we're at now. Uh, in the early days of talking through this, um, one of the things became clear when we started talking about Craig becoming the campus pastor. Um, one of the themes that came up continually is uh, he's somebody that people will trust. Um, he's a man of integrity, and he cares about people genuinely and, uh, and is approachable. And so it's a delight to see what God has done and to delight to see what God is going to do in the future. And it's good to see the bigger picture, how God has been working through not, not just Jan and I, not just Family Church, but in all kinds of ways um, that God has shaped you for this position and for such a time as this. Yeah. And... Uh, it's great to see the goodness of God at work. You know, I'm going to say one last thing. Okay. See, I'm excited too. Not only that I've been a part for a long time here at Family Church, behind the scenes, m making some decisions that many don't even know, helping lead behind the scenes. But I'm excited that the retirement that you're about to go through is a chance for you not to leave the body of Christ in mm -hmm. Sutherland, not to step away forever from Family Church, to take a pause and a break, and find where God can best continue to use you in this community and for us to get to work together in new in new and exciting ways where you're freed up from some of perhaps the overriding responsibilities. So I'm excited as we move forward in that way.